Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, Diligent, PwC, Center for Audit Quality, the Conference Board, and corporate board members. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodrich and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources and co-founder and editor-at-large at Corporate Board Member Magazine. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the show being shot here in New York at the conference board studios. Today we're going to be talking about proxy contests and sort of the do's and the don'ts. And joining me is somebody that we've had on the show before. He's becoming sort of our resident activist, helping with activists kind of person. <laughs> uh, please welcome Greg Taxton, who's the managing member of Spotlight Advisors, LLC. Welcome, Greg. Thank you very much. For those Great of you who don't know, Spotlight serves as an advisor in shareholder activism situations, sort of sometimes on both sides of the fence, which makes it very interesting. So just a little bit of background on Greg, which I think is helpful. Uh, career as a lawyer, uh, was an investment banker, co-founded uh, and served as CEO of Glass-Lewis, uh, which all of us are familiar with as one of the largest proxy advisors and later was uh, managing an activist hedge fund. So he comes to us with a lot of experience. So Greg, so here we are. We're gonna be talking about the do's and the don'ts, but we're gonna start right. with the don'ts. Oh, okay. And it's, it's either don'ts or mistakes that you've witnessed. Right. So let's use that as guidance for your first part. Sure, so uh, you know we've been involved in one way or another in 75 activist situations. We've seen a lot of great practices and some things which uh, never seem to work out well. As it turns out, the things that you shouldn't do are kind of the ABCs of things you shouldn't do. And the first thing is you shouldn't assume that you understand where your shareholders really are. Because shareholders have a tendency to tell management that uh, you know they love the current strategy, they love the current team. Uh, they don't always give you kind of the straight scoop about how they feel about the management team or the strategy. And so you can't assume you have their support. You also shouldn't assume that the activist has no great ideas, that just by virtue of the fact that they're an outsider and not in the boardroom, that they couldn't have possibly developed you know, anything good. Actually, some of the time, you know, people who invest tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars in your business and have spent a lot of time doing diligence come up with pretty good ideas. So don't assume that everything they're going to tell you or every piece of their agenda is not worthy of consideration. The B part of the ABCs is uh, be careful not to block them with technicalities or sort of legal runarounds, such as changing your advance notice bylaws or putting in a poison pill or suing. Those things which are, are sort of um, tactics of a bygone era, to use another B, uh, end up you know, not looking very good in front of shareholders and ultimately redound to the detriment, in our experience at least, of the board. The C part of the ABCs is don't use canards and, and sort of tired phrases in describing the activist or in thinking about them. They are not all short-termers. They don't all have suspicious motives. They don't you know, all have kind of a lack of understanding of the business. And while those sorts of phrases that were once applied to activists and probably had you know, some relevance or, or, or even you know, uh, uh, some importance to other shareholders, I think today are seen as kind of the same old tired lines that companies often use, when in fact, many of these shareholder activists are actually quite sophisticated and, and where those, those phrases don't apply. There's a D too, by the way, it's not just ABC. The D is uh, don't delegate the entire campaign to the management team. In the end, proxy fights and engagements with, uh, uh, you know, with, with activist investors are often about, almost always about, the board and the board's reputation, their oversight of management and strategy, and their performance. And so as a board and as directors, unlike many other things in the business, you don't want to delegate the messaging and the communication and the engagement down to management. You want to be involved. So don't delegate and, and leave yourself sort of exposed. 
And finally, there's an E, actually. So it's not just ABC, it's also E, which is that everything you say as a board, as a company, uh, you know, in engaging with the activist is subject to being repeated, often twisted a little bit, and then repeated to a broader audience. So the don't is, you know, everything you say can be used. Don't say things you don't want to, to, to be heard broadly when either talking with the activists or one-off shareholders or even uh, with one another. It's almost tough in today's world to lump everybody under a term of activist because there's right. so many different, quote, activists today that have different styles, different agendas, there's single individuals, there's very sophisticated you know, companies and That's people, right. the Nelson Peltzes who typically know your company, as you said, better than you do, you yeah. know, kind of situation. So even from the start, wouldn't you agree that it's tough when we, when we use the word activist to really even pinpoint the groups that we're talking about? Yeah, well, everybody's an activist in some sense now, right? The, the, these techniques of engaging with companies and attempting to make them better and, and, and offering ideas is something that's been now embedded in kind of everybody's investment strategy. So there are degrees of activism, for sure. Some, some call themselves suggestivists or constructivists, and there are those who are maybe a little more hostile or more willing to be more aggressive. But, but everybody, every shareholder, every active manager that I know of today is, is willing to do more sort of proactive engagement with directors and with management teams than they have in the past. Okay, so we've talked about the don'ts in yes. the proxy contest. And we know, just so that we aren't repetitive, we know that for every don't, there's a do on the other side of that. So if yeah. we, You're if taking we, away half my content. Well, if, yes. we take, <laughs> if we take away those do's, yes. okay, yes. And, but let's look at the the things that are important that a board or a management must remember either in a pre-proxy contest or whether they're right. in the heat of a proxy contest. So now the do's. So you're going to be surprised to learn that the, the do's are the vowels of the alphabet. I don't know how that happened, but it, it just turns out to be the case. So the A part of the do is, uh, of the do's is admit your performance problems and issues be willing to be you know, transparent about the challenges the business has faced and, and explain to your shareholders why the plan you're pursuing now going forward is gonna address those issues or turn the business around. But, but don't sort of hide from you know, past problems, admit them upright, forthright, transparently. You'll be surprised that you know, shareholders don't expect perfection. They do expect you to be willing to kind of admit the problem and, and do something about it. So the first do is be willing to admit the performance problems that may have brought you know, the activists to your shores and just have a better plan you know, for moving forward. The E, because we're, we're doing vowels now, is engage. Engage with the activists. Don't hide under the desk. Talk to them. Often they have good ideas. Even if they don't have good ideas, they're generally at least well informed. They're not. They're not a hundred percent wrong, and it's surprising actually how much progress you can make in dialogue with these people. I've seen it over and over again. The ability to, to kind of diffuse the situation or find middle ground, but it only happens if you're willing to sit down and engage, as opposed to hide behind. Uh, lawyers or advisors or, or, or hide in the, you know, in, in, in the back room. You, you've really got to step out and be willing to talk to them. The I part, if we're doing the vowels, is focus on the issues, the substance of what the activist is suggesting and what the company is going to do as a, as a you know, future plan or, or, or substantive response rather than on ad hominem attacks or defensive posturing. Focus on the, the key substance and the key issues at stake because ultimately investors don't really care whether the activist has 2% or 3% or is a short termer or had some other you know, lack of success in some prior thing. They care about the issues and the substance of what's being proposed and how the board is reacting. The O part is make sure that you've organized your team and your response in, in the best way you can. And I think today there's a tendency to some extent to overpopulate those teams and to hire everybody who's kind of ever stood next to a proxy statement and try to get them to help you. And that can be worse, frankly, than, than, than having nobody. 
The, the best answer is to, like in any endeavor, is to have, I think, a, a tight, well-constructed team that can deliver great advice and can help you through what is a unique sort of set of challenges and, and therefore deserving of expertise and outsiders, but not deserving of 50 outsiders. You really need to organize that team carefully. And finally, the you in the vowels is make sure you use your directors effectively in this process. And that is to say, this isn't a moment to hide your fiduciaries from shareholders. It's actually a time for the directors to step up, to talk both with the activist and with your other shareholders, and for them to express their fidelity to shareholder interests, their understanding of the strategy, their contemplation of all the issues that have been put on the table. But you know, use those directors, use them with your important constituents. Their voice is often more effective in these situations than management's voice. Um, often the, the activist is, is, is saying something about performance of the business or the management team or the CEO. And the best antidote to that is to have directors step up and say, we're here to protect shareholder interests. We've heard these issues and complaints. We're working on them. We have a plan. We're, we're overseeing management carefully. And we're not afraid to be here as your fiduciary and to explain to you all the great things that we think are going on at the company. Well, audience, I just want to let you know that this is the first show that we've ever filmed that you can, that is approved to share with your children <laughs> because they're going to learn the alphabet yes. and they're going to learn their vowels. So please feel <laughs> free to share that. Well, Greg, any, if you had to, if you had to send our directors and audience off with one, the most important thought that you might pass along to them as they um, go on to the next show, what would it be? Well, I think it's that, um, you know, a activism isn't a, and, and, and these proxy fights shouldn't be thought of as a war or a battle, which is often the analogy that gets used, uh, defending against an activist. Instead, they're opportunities. They're opportunities to engage with shareholders, to learn other ideas for how the business might, you know, be better operated, to think about other types of directors that might be useful to the composition of the board. And, 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 and taking a mindset of sort of openness and objectivity, there's another O, um, you know, as you, as you think about the uh, uh, complaints or the agenda that's been put on the table, can go a long way to actually resolving these uh, situations uh, without all the distraction and expense that's often attendant with a war. Well, we hope that our audience isn't in a position to have to <laughs> have this great advice, but right. it seems like today it, it is something that, that somebody should be prepared for, certainly, and if you are, you need to do the research. So I want to thank you for taking the time to My come pleasure. in and making it um, really so pointed and succinct, and I think it will be helpful, and maybe even for kids. So <laughs> there thanks we go. for taking the time. Very good. Thank and you. that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that could help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners, Diligent, PwC, Center for Audit Quality, the Conference Board, and Corporate Board Member. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson, Sonsini, Goodrich, and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.